Hello and welcome to this Electrical Principles training video. In this video, we're going to start discussing how we quantify electricity, or in other words, how we count how much electricity there is. There'll also be an opportunity to start filling in our SR units worksheet, so make sure you've downloaded it by clicking the link below if you haven't done so already. Now, in a previous video, we saw that electricity is a flow of negatively charged electrons. And the thing that makes it quite tricky for us to start quantifying or counting how much electricity there is, is that electrons are small, really, really small. To try and help you get your head around just how small they are, we're going to carry out a thought experiment. Uh, we're going to go back to thinking about atoms for a moment instead of electrons. Remember, electrons are a small part of an atom. So, Let's do a thought experiment. This is an experiment, not a competition, so please don't uh, claim a prize here. But let's say that I would give you one atom of gold for every second that the universe has existed. Now, how much gold do you think that would be, either in weight or in value? Now, before you answer, think about how long the universe has existed for. Most current estimates state that it's around 13 billion, 700 million, and 11 years old. I can be that accurate because I read in a book 11 years ago that it was 13 billion, 700 million years old. But take that number and times it by the number of uh, days in a year, by the number of hours in a day, uh, minutes in an hour, and seconds in a minute. If you do that calculation, then you get 432 quadrillion. So 432 quadrillion atoms of gold. That's a lot of atoms. But how much gold do you think it represents? Do you think maybe it's the, the full stock at Fort Knox? Do you think maybe it's just the size of my wedding ring here? Well, I've calculated it and worked it out at just over 14 milligrams of gold, which in September 2020 would be worth about 68p. So what does that tell us then? Well, it tells us that atoms are really small. However, as we said, electricity is the flow of electrons, which are only a tiny part of an atom. How tiny a part? Well, here's our old friend, the hydrogen atom here, with the single proton in the nucleus and the electron whizzing around the outside. Now, how big is that electron? Well, to try and understand the size of the electron, we'll enlarge the whole atom a bit. So here we've got the London eye. And if we were to enlarge the hydrogen atom to the size of the London eye, so the proton is in the center of the axle and the electron is on the edge of the wheel there, how big would the proton in the middle be? Well, by my calculations, and I'm quite willing to be corrected on this, but I would say it would be about 3.6 millimeters in diameter, about the size of a lentil. And what about the electron? How big will that be? Well, it's, it's actually very difficult to actually define the size of an electron, never mind a, a scaled up one. But just to give you kind of some idea of how big it would be, have you ever noticed the sun shining through a window on a sunny day and the angle of the light comes in at just the right kind of position to catch up little flecks of dust mo uh, floating around in the air there? Well, that's about how big the scaled up electron would be. I do sincerely apologise to any quantum physicists who are watching at this point for seriously oversimplifying your subject area and any inaccuracies in my calculations or comparisons. And I'm happy to be corrected, as I say. But anyway, the point of this exercise, what is it? Why have we done this? Well, hasn't it shown to us that if atoms are tiny, as we already established, then electrons are unimaginably smaller? It also shows us that the universe is mostly made of absolutely nothing, but that's a very different video. We'll maybe revisit that on another occasion. Now, uh, for those of us who have managed to hang on through all those calculations and analogies, if you're still with me, you're probably wondering what this has all led to. What was the point of this? Well, it's led us to see that if we want to quantify the flow of electricity, if we want to count how much electricity there is in a circuit, and if electricity is made up of these spectacularly tiny electrons, then we're either going to have to do some maths with some insanely large numbers, when we think about the amount of electrons that must be flowing, or we need to come up with an alternative method of counting or quantifying electricity. Now, when electricity flows, instead of considering the individual electrons that are flowing through the conductor, we kind of lump them together in a big bunch, and we count those big bunches instead. And how big is that bunch? Well, it's six million, 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 or six quintillion electrons. It's actually a much more specific value than that, but that just helps to give us a sense of the size of the number of electrons that we're talking about here. So when we lump this amount of electrons together into one unit, we call it one 
Coulomb. One Coulomb, named for Charles Augustin de Coulomb, a uh, French scientist. So one Coulomb is just a big bunch of about six million, million, million electrons. Now, I'm sure you'll agree that when it comes to calculations, we can be really grateful that the Coulomb was thought of as a unit because it means that we don't have to deal with insanely huge numbers thinking about the quantities of individual electrons flowing in the circuit. Before we go any further though, let's put this unit into our table of SR units. So if you haven't already done so, uh, then please click the link in the description below, download that worksheet uh, and have a look at that because the top line you can see relates to the unit of electrical charge. Now the mathematical symbol is Q. Now that might seem a little bit unusual to you that we're using Q to stand for charge, but again it's from the French quantity du charge, so that's why we use Q for that. Uh, the unit, as we've discussed, is called the Coulomb, which remember is just a specific number of electrons that we've lumped together to make our calculations a little bit easier to do, and the unit symbol is a capital C. So if we had two Coulombs flowing through a circuit, we'd write it like this. It would look like this, Q equals 2C charge equals two coulombs. So key points to take from this video. Electrons are tiny. Because they're tiny and a lot of them needs to flow to have a observable effect for an electrician, we count them in big bunches and those bunches are called coulombs. The mathematical symbol is a capital Q and the unit symbol is a capital C. So hopefully we've established here just how it is that we start to quantify or count electricity. The Coulomb may be a term that perhaps you're a little bit unfamiliar with, maybe you've not heard that before, but we're gonna see how that relates to our perhaps more familiar uh, values of electricity that we used to and maybe we've used uh, through our school life and in other parts of our life. So stay tuned for the next video in the series because that's going to explain how Coulombs relate to things like amperes, volts and ohms. All that remains in this video is to say thank you very much for watching.